Hello, hello everybody and greetings. Welcome to the Opiate Academic Year Inauguration 2024-2025. So while we wait that everybody can join, again, greetings to everybody. My name is Greta um, and I, on behalf of Opit, Open Institute of Technology, it's my pleasure to welcome you all to today's event. So we mark the beginning of a new academic year at Opit. And with the courses just around the corner, we're gonna start on the 16th. Today is the prelude to what promises to be a very exciting new academic journey of learning and innovation. So our audience, all the people participating includes current students, students of last year, new students. We also have professors and prospective candidates and in general enthusiasts of anyone in education and technology. But allow me to introduce you to our speakers, esteemed speakers. Uh, so we have Professor Francesco Profumo, our rector and former Italy's Minister of Education. Welcome, Professor Profumo. Thank you, thank you. Uh, then we have Elena Bonfiglioli. She's Global Business Leader for Healthcare at Microsoft. A warm welcome to you, Elena. Thank you, thanks for having me. Then we have Francesca Fancoli and Marc Pilon, our students of the Master in Applied Data Science and AI at Opit 2023. Hello to you. Hello and good afternoon. Hello, thanks for having me. And finally, we have Ricardo Fleppo, is the founder of Opit. Hello, Ricardo. Hello, Greta. Um, unfortunately, the Honorable Mr. Grima uh, regrets that he's not able to attend the event due to a last minute commitment, but he sends all of you his warm regards. So without any further ado, I would like to start. So thank you for joining us. And uh, I would like to begin the Opit Academic Year inauguration with Professor Profumo. So we are very honored to have you here with us and uh, with your extensive experience in educational leadership. We, you can provide us with some valuable insights into the evolving landscape of education. So the word to you. Thank you, Greta. Thank you, the audience, for participating in this event and for trusting OPIT uh, for their higher education studies. Today, we are inaugurating the 2024-2025 academic year at OPIT. We have uh, more than 300 students from uh, roughly 75 countries enrolled in all our programs, spanning computer science, artificial intelligence, cybersecurity, data science, and digital business. We are incredibly proud of the diversity we reached in terms of gender, personal professional backgrounds, and geographical provenience. We have students from Italy, Austria, Romania, Nigeria, Malta, the Czech Republic, Brazil, Vietnam, China, and many others. Of course, a big part of the value of education lies in the domain-specific knowledge that the institution is capable of providing. This could be your mastery of Python and or Java, your understanding of computer vision or natural language processing, the cryptography algorithm in cybersecurity or the best practices for developing digital products or business models. An equally important part of your personal growth, both will come from taking advantage of the broader OPIT ecosystem. You are now joining your fellow students, the professor, the network of company advisors and the tutors. The brief and the depth of this interaction will be key for extracting the full value of your journey. We started the OPIT at the beginning of the year 2022 with a vision to democratize access to high quality tech education. No matter your economic condition, where you are physically located, or whether you need to work while studying, you must have the opportunity to access a world-class education in a high demanded field. This vision comes from a concrete understanding. Tech education 
plays a massive role in the future of jobs and society. And we know how hard it is for traditional institutions to keep up with change. What we didn't expect in the year 2022, at least with this magnitude and very short time span, was the advent of AI within our society. Little did we know we were launching of it at the beginning of the fourth industrial revolution. I constantly meet with the whole OPIT team and its management. One thing that particularly struck me was how many of you, especially in the admission phase, expressed both your worry and your excitement about what will happen due to the massive advent of AI in our society. This mixed feeling in healthy and mature, I would like to express my point of view on it. Yes, the fourth industrial resolution will have a massive impact on society within a very short time. If the adoption of ICT was fast, this will be much faster. Also, this revolution will not just be about AI. AI will likely be the leader, but a much broader impact will come from the convergence of other transformative technologies that will reach their maturation in the coming years or decade. I'm talking about renewable technologies, robotics, quantum computing, and the microbiology. We can picture a world that will reshape itself in the coming decades and where human beings will certainly redefine their role both as a person and as a professional. Today's communication thought sometimes depicts a world of massive job losses and the human beings gradually moving towards being supporting actors. I don't believe in this view of the world and its evolution. What lies ahead of us is a world of tremendous opportunities and rewards. And given the learning path you are about to undertake, which underlines your willingness to take action on this change, you should be much more intrigued than worried by the upcoming changes, by your contribution to the new world. Previous industrial revolutions allowed humans to substitute manual, repetitive jobs with mechanization. This allowed humans to obtain a much higher quality output in less time, which today translates into shorter working hours and the overall world's productivity thousands of times higher than just a century ago. For the first time in history, on the other hand, AI is a technology superchanging our most precious skills, the intellect, the capability to gather inputs from the outer world, elaborate on them, and then translated them into creative and valuable solution that did not exist before. I believe that AI will have an impact on jobs in two ways. First, professions will change. A few will disappear and many more will transform. From this perspective, your decision to undertake a long structured degree with the OPIT will place you at the forefront of this change. On the other hand, the working week will also change. More output will be achievable in much less time in most fields. And this will gradually move employers to offer shorter work weeks without a wage reduction. Part of this additional free time 
will need to be used by people to keep learning repeatedly to stay current and relevant. In the past, the life model was linear. You were born, went to school, then went to university, entered the workforce, worked for most of, of your life within the same company, and then retired. Now, it will become increasingly circular. There will no longer be one-off education, but uh, you will go to school and learn throughout most of the productive part of your professional life to stay current and relevant. This view of education as a lifetime companion is also shaping the evolution of OPIT's value proposition in ways that we are eager to present to you in the coming months. Once again, I congratulate the audience of students just about to start this new academic year for taking on the challenge of acting in this time of change. We hope what you learn at OPIT will be a founding pillar in your future career. I also want to thank all the professors, tutors, and OPIT staff for ensuring that our vision will become a reality. Thank you. Thank you so much, Professor Perfumo. So with this opening and with this like future vision of what is happening, uh, I would like to just pass the words to Elena Bonfiglioli because now we have the pleasure of hearing from you, like the uh, from Microsoft as well, expertise and talk a little bit more about what you called before the hiring imperative and how the uh, Microsoft Work Trend Index data can support uh, in like the insights about and examples from healthcare about what's happening career-wise in the industry. Thank you. Thank you very much, Greta, for the introductions and uh, congratulations, first of all, to OPIT, but also to all of you as uh, students, um, new students or past students of what is, I think, a very relevant and incredibly important program in the journey of education that we need to take. I think there is no better place where you could be in terms of learning for one reason, because the topics that you're gonna be learning are really driving the key components of the hiring imperative. And we'll be talking about that, but think about this data point. Think about the fact that out there, based on the 31,000 people that across various countries have been surveyed, uh, on the future of work and on the work trend index, 66% see of the employers see that they would not hire somebody today that doesn't have AI capabilities. So it's a profound imperative for where the blend of specialization, one could be a marketeer, one could be a developer, one could be a security expert, one could be a, a banker, it doesn't really matter. AI is so pervasive today that it becomes a needed requirement in education and 66% of the employers would not higher without AI capabilities. That's one. But 71% also says they would be hire somebody more junior with less experience, but AI proficient, because that is the skill that is needed for their organization in the future. So those two data are really what I call the hiring imperative. And what's interesting is that it becomes also a request of current workforce. And that is where I think um, 
as Professor Profumo has been describing, there is no longer one moment in which we learn, then we go to work and then we retire. We are lifelong learners. And actually, even more so, all of us in the world of work, I think, and all of us living today, if we want to make the most of the future, we have to adapt a mindset of unlearning and relearning, not only learning. So sometimes we're going to have to unlearn to do things the way we used to and include new behaviors. Security, which is something you will be surely studying, it's securing um, an endpoint or securing you know, a, a data set is no longer the same 10 years ago today or in two, three years from now. And we have seen how astute the threats are becoming. Um, similarly, the role of ethics and responsibility as we look at digital and AI, totally different landscape. 10 years ago, when we're starting to look at it, people are looking at why are you talking about ethics and, and, and digital or analytics or data and responsible use of technology. Today, there is no way forward without those topics. So that learning, relearning and learning is very important. We see that today, 75% um, of the professionals that we um, serve it, they are already either adopting the AI plans that their organizations are doing or bringing their own experimentation to work. And why? And I think the why is important because when we think about the rate of burnout, there is over 45% of the workforce that in, in, is in burnout. And why? Because there is just too much. They have at least one third of the work that is expected of them that cannot be taken on. So we need technologies. Is it agents? Is it large language model? Is it co-pilot capabilities? Is it automation of processes that assist us in doing certain tasks and maybe replace certain tasks for us? So there is, I would say, a hiring imperative, but there is a real capacity gap that this revolution, which is the revolution of AI and Gen AI, is coming to fill. And what is happening is that it's going to shift some of our focus, attention, employment into higher value parts of the workload. And it's interesting to see that, for example, the, the users are saying that some of these technologies also allow them to focus more time in being more creative or to really allow them to refocus their day on matters that always they were doing at the end of their day, right? So it just shifts the way in which we put our intellect, our brain, our activity, and our collaboration capability. When I think about the work um, that we're doing in healthcare, it is very clear that with 13 million gaps of health professionals all around the world, this is the statistic of the WHO, we, all of us, um, even those that are, uh, you know, still younger and, and starting their professional career, will need people that care for our health but there is not going to be enough people to do that. So how do we make sure that doctors and nurses and radiologists don't waste time, you know, writing down and scribbling down or typing certain things, but really can see more patients because, for example, in the background, there is a voice to text AI capability that already transforms a conversation into a clinical note that gets into the electronic medical record that that's queried or the radiologist has an assistant that says 
attention here as you're doing this mammography, there is a risk. Because maybe at the end of the day, that radiologist is tired. And actually, we know there is about 15% of errors that are still going on for misdiagnosis of early stages of breast cancer, for example. So there is an iron imperative. There is a capacity um, strain, I would say, uh, most painfully in, in healthcare because all of us will, will want and need that care for ourselves and those we love. But also there is a capability gap. There is a talent gap. There's a talent gap in the sense that um, clearly these roles are very well paid and they're still very rare and we need to democratize a little bit more how pervasive the digital, but particularly the AI and Gen AI capabilities can be in the population. And so for all of these reasons, actually, I think that you've chosen the right um, path in, in education and that this could, you know, um, take you in a very tech-oriented career or anywhere else because technology has become a real foundational part of every job. Microsoft sees a pilot for every user in every profession and as a, as a first step to interact with knowledge that is tacit in an organization to automate processes and so on. So when you embrace that vision, you know, one provider or another provider, it doesn't matter. I mean, we really see the infusion of AI across the whole fabric, economic fabric of society. And therefore, mastering that skill is really like literacy and numeracy as the basics, really, of how we come to work, how we are professionals, how we bring our best to the creativity and the intelligence that we apply to our work. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Okay, so with that, I just want to congratulate and say thank you. And uh, again, congratulations to Opit as well. Thank you so much, Elena. Thank you for that. It was very insightful. And I think it's triggering some of the uh, insights that also Francesca and Mark can share about what happened to them last year when they decided to join. Maybe Francesca, we can start with you. What do you think as well about your career? And what do you think about uh, what Elena was saying, but in light of what you've done, been doing yeah. so far, like how was your year? <laughs> Absolutely, thank you, and I will for sure refer the talent gap when I I will talk about my myself. I will give just two words about myself to introduce. Uh, so my name is Francesca. I'm a student of the MSc uh, in uh, Applied Data Science and AI with uh, Mark. And uh, I was formerly graduated in biotech with a background in risk and compliance. Uh, I'm also mother, caregiver, lots of things to do in my life, and I also work. And I'm giving these details just because, of course, this is important in terms of the possibility to access a higher education at this moment of my life, while, while I'm 38 and very, very full hands of stuff. <laughs> So basically, uh, I started to feel that technology was going very, very fast. And uh, referring to the previously uh, said uh, talent gap, I decided really to update my tech skills uh, 10 years plus after my previous uh, degree. And so I immediately found that uh, OPIT was uh, a very good choice for that. Uh, it stood out uh, in uh, my evaluation because of the innovative curriculum and the accessibility, as I said, and the flexibility the programs uh, offer um, for students like myself with full hands uh, of uh, things to do. And uh, this, this flexibility is uh, really available. And uh, when you have multiple responsibility to balance, of course, that's a very important uh, um, possibility. I will give uh, you more details, some hints about uh, our life at Opit and uh, about the programs. I felt like the angle of the programs in AI uh, were full of the latest uh, advances and the opportunity to study with uh, the professionals uh, with uh, different backgrounds made uh, a real a good choice uh, for myself uh, to get skills uh, I didn't have really from scratches. 
Um, so the professors are all very expert in their study field. Uh, they are all very open to dialogue uh, during the live lessons. As uh, many of you know, I love to attend the lessons and interact with the professor. Then there were guests uh, and also discussions with fellow students. That was really enriching and interesting. Um, if I have to recall one of uh, the standout moments in my academic journey, of course, sure it is related to ethics of AI and regulation, which is my favorite field. Uh, we had a great uh, a discussion um, uh, when we had a guest from the European Parliament, so very important one. Uh, it was an exceptional opportunity for all of us uh, to hear and interact directly uh, with someone deeply involved uh, in the policy making, which is currently going on, happening right now. So. That, that was really, really important. And I think that is really in interesting for the students coming in. Changing subjects, uh, speaking of the schedule and time management, um, being an online learner required a very good discipline for sure, but uh, OPIT uh, offers uh, lots of help and support. Uh, so the staff is very available for uh, arrangement and accommodation. Uh, the platform is uh, really well done and uh, we have live classes all the material, everything is uh, accessible and 24-7, uh, which is useful for someone like me. And uh, to wrap up, uh, we had a lot of also pro proposed uh, hands-on projects uh, where we learn uh, really new skills and uh, those skills I could really apply in my job. And also, I also learned skills uh, from scratches, like uh, to code in Python. And uh, everything is really taken care of from, from the beginning. Um, I, I really appreciated also the cultural community. So the exchanges that we have with our network, uh, with uh, all the people with different backgrounds. And uh, if I have to finish uh, to the new students specifically, I would say an advice to create a community to make real connection with the other students and also the professor, which are always very available to talk. And it will be motivating to proceed together and to create this network uh, throughout the, the journey. And uh, that's the most uh, invaluable things uh, OPIT uh, created. And uh, I'm really glad to be part of this community and uh, to be there, to be here. Thank you so much, Francesca. Uh, there are some also some questions coming up. So maybe at the end, I'm going to ask you a few questions right. about that. And thank you for your testimonial. I think it's very important for all the students that are joining, uh, especially to join the community. We insist on that. We are online, but the community has always been one of our pillars, as Professor Kufumo put it in many testimonials of his. And also, like they take the full advantage of the full support that we give, and of the fact that there are so many different students from all over the world. So you learn as well from your peers, and that gives you an edge, career wise as well. Then coming to Mark, maybe you want to share something about as well your projects because you've done the fast track. And you're already like working in a project. That you've been working for the past few months, so. That that's correct. Yeah, Greta, thank you very much. Um, maybe perhaps I'll just tell my story a little bit. I, I came from a, a teaching background, actually, so I didn't have uh, a lot of tech skills. Uh, I jumped into taking a couple of boot camps here and there, trying to learn some programming, and I was really looking for something, of course, with a, a master's degree, um, and, and OPIT really stood out with that. It, it had all the components that I personally was looking for. Um, of course, it's online, I had the right price point, um, it was all accredited by the government. Um, and then also another one of the big things was the internship potential that was there, which I, I can touch on because I participated uh, at an internship uh, here in Italy, which I, I found really, really valuable in terms of experience and really interesting. Um, but just going through um, the courses and, and the teachers and all the classes, I, I found I was really, really happy with it. They were teaching you stuff. They weren't just evaluating you. and uh, I, I learned a lot of different things, like you mentioned, with, with different projects. Um, and um, some of the courses I've done before, that this is, would be my, my third master's degree. So um, I think it depends on the person's perspective of where they're coming from. But for me personally, um, the, the tech side is where I found I really benefited from, especially going from uh, the, the first to second term. I found this is really where I uh, really excelled from being kind of like an intermediate type of um, developer into more of an advanced level because we, we touched on everything. 
um, from translators to music genre classifiers, computer vision. Uh, I remember we were just grabbing random pictures off the internet to just label animals. It was really interesting. Um, a sediment analysis, not only on PDF, but also with uh, YouTube as well. Um, the, as we all know, spam classification that you, everyone has experienced with like their emails and that sort of thing. Um, a customer churn prediction. So like Elena had mentioned, it, it's, you're recovering a lot of different industries all, all over. Um, and But for me personally, I was working with uh, the internship, I was working uh, specifically with anomaly detection, which I found really interesting. So with, with the internship, um, the company I was working with, they deal with a lot of uh, the payment processes that are happening in Italy. And some of their processes were, uh, they were doing manually, um, they were still using like Excel. And of course their business is growing. And so um, I came in and I was able to, um, kind of show them a different perspective with an anomaly detection, employing the AI uh, into their processes and discovering more and more things like um, um, being able to uh, try to implement the cloud and um, have all the processes happening in the cloud, which I found really, really interesting. So really, really good experience for me. Um, I guess my my advice to, to new students um, uh, and this has been mentioned before, but definitely if, if you've got your group with your students where you can kind of ask the, the silly questions <laughs> and then and then, of course, the professors are there and the support staff are there to ask the, the other questions, too. I, I found them really, really helpful. Um, so you were never really stuck or trapped and, and you could always keep progressing and moving on. Um, I, I think one of the, the surprising things for, for me um, was the learning platform uh, using using Canvas. It was really organized, it was accessible, uh, very mobile friendly. And like Francesca mentioned, like when you're really busy, you need to be able just to find information, um, find that, that you know class that you missed, that the pre-recorded class that's there. It, it was very, very useful to, to have this, definitely. Um, and so I guess um, advice, uh, if you're looking into doing the, uh, this kind of a program, uh, definitely Python and math background would help. Um, asking for, um, like I mentioned, asking for advice. And then things that I'm personally working on right now, we did a lot of theory classes on it, but I'm working more on um, trying to work in the cloud, Microsoft Fabric, and really trying to um, leverage the, the technology and everything in, in, the, in the business environment that, uh, that you can work in. So that's pretty much it for me, but thank you. So you're continuous learning anyway, as we said. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> definitely. It, it doesn't. It doesn't stop. No, mm -hmm. definitely not. Mm -hmm. I, I think for me personally, I, I find it really interesting. So I'm. I just want to get more and more information, and I like to um, work with people from different backgrounds too, because they have different perspectives, different ideas, and I, I find it. It really helps me to think in a in a different way. So it's it's really good. And are you planning to continue your project now or? moving out of the finance sectors, any idea? No, actually, um, I, with the company that I'm with, uh, I don't know if I can mention the company or not, but the company I'm with, they've actually offered me a, a full-time position. So I've decided to accept that as well. So, um, okay. which was one of my, yeah, it was one of my plans was to mm -hmm. immigrate into the EU because I'm I'm half Italian. So I've used mm -hmm. internships. So that was part of the, the plan. Okay, there. okay. So That's I'm very great. happy with this one. Okay, thank you, Mark, for your testimonial. Um, again, we're gonna have some questions for you as well, but now, now maybe I'm gonna pass to Ricardo for his remarks about, uh, Ricardo is the founder of it. He had this idea with Professor Profumo. So uh, in a way, uh, what, what do you think, what are your reflections about these past two years, but also what is your vision of the future of Obit? based on the changes that are happening so fast as well? What, do, what are our goals and inspirations as well? Yes, thank you. Thank you all the guests and uh, the participants for being here today. Um, I must say that I'm very excited about mm -hmm. the, the off of this new academic year. I'm also a bit relieved. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Greta is as well. Uh, was very... Uh, hard in terms of how many things we have to pull together throughout the past mm -hmm. year 
and actually the, the preparation for being here today and kicking off this new year uh, started even before the beginning of the previous year, which, by the mm. way, was also uh, our first one. So first of all, I would like to uh, praise the consistency and the commitment of the whole OP team throughout this past year, mm -hmm. which was very outstanding and exceptional and uh, really helped translating our vision and our work into uh, a, a hopefully very successful beginning of this new mm -hmm. academic year. So um, as I was saying before, um, it took a lot, a lot of time and a lot of work to be here today. One thing mm -hmm. that um, I've learned throughout my career and my personal life is that the more you prefer and the less luck you need. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I found it uh, this. I, I found this to be very true, even truer in the higher educational industry, which mm -hmm. is an industry that requires a lot of vision, a lot of planning, a lot of ex expertise, a lot of preparation, uh, a strict adherence to mm -hmm. the high quality standards that, in our case, are set forth uh, by the MFHEA authority which is the authority in Malta, basically governing all the higher education uh, institutions and, of course, the EU. So um, we started planning the academic roadmap for this new year. So basically the four new programs that we added on top of the uh, two that we launched last year in uh, June 2023. Um, this required a lot of interaction with multiple stakeholders. Um, and ultimately, uh, the goal was not only to improve our offering into areas that we felt had the biggest shortages in terms of skills on the job market. So uh, cybersecurity, technical AI, digital business, but also to improve the offering uh, within our existing um, uh, value proposition. So we improved the way the, the uh, master of science in AI and digital business is, is taught, as well as we added a lot of electives, a lot of choice in the computer science bachelor degree, which was as well uh, a key factor for us. So getting back to the, the more prepared, the less luck you need, I think that uh, you, uh, being here today with us and deciding to undertake uh, such a, a like a medium to long term study journey with us um, is the best uh, example of what I mean. Uh, by deciding to study with us a bachelor or a master degree, uh, you you implicitly choose not to take any shortcut to building your expertise and to uh, build your future career on very solid foundations. Um, I always like to be like very transparent and very direct. And I would like to tell you uh, very directly that you will find some challenging times maybe throughout this study journey. Francesca was saying it very, very clearly. If you work like many of our students do, maybe even full time and maybe you even have a family to take take care of uh, you will find it challenging sometimes because being able to manage all these things together is uh, is uh, is very hard but what 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 i can tell you is that in this journey and again francesca and mark said it very clearly you're, you're definitely not alone um one thing that Professor Profumo and I agreed on from the very beginning was the importance of the community. This is very true when, when you study online. When you study online, you sometimes risk of feeling uh, left by yourself. This is definitely a thing that we had very clear in mind and an aspect that we want to like bridge the gap on. And uh, um, we definitely incentivize the, the, the creation of a community within the, the students' community itself. We incentivize the creation of uh, even independent communication channels between the students, so not, not even institutional. But we, we do a lot of work to incentivize this to happen, and we offer a lot of support on top with the student support team, with the, with the program uh, coordination, 
uh, with the tutors being being there and being available seven days a week. Um, so this is definitely a thing that I would like to stress, the fact that you will not be alone, that you will be accompanied to, throughout the, the experience with Opit. And um, I would uh, like to, to, to definitely say that the core element in our value proposition is uh, represented by our professors. So uh, professors are the center of the Opit experience. You will. Uh, be able to engage with them, not just through the asynchronous content that they made available on Canvas, which is the learning platform, the mobile friendly platform that Mark was talking about, but also in live lessons in, in uh, yeah, the, the live lessons that take place uh, pretty much every week with every professor. Um, Francesca mentioned how important was for her to attend these lessons, not just to like keep up with the study material, but also to, to expand on what uh, she could have just by attending the, 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 the recorded sessions. And I would like to stress this point. We, uh, when we were uh, defining the learning methodology with Professor Profumo at the very beginning, we question ourselves whether like maybe a totally asynchronous stu study experience would suit better the, the needs of students that would mostly be working. Um, while it would have been a lot easier for us, we decided that uh, um, even online, even with working students, by offering uh, like a more profound way to engage with experts, with professors, uh, by being able to ask them questions, by being able to develop case studies throughout the classes, was actually the best way um, to teach students within an online environment. Um, again, this, this was not the easiest solution for us, but was definitely what we thought was going to be the, the best for you. Um, we're super happy about the diversity that we were able to achieve uh, in this uh, uh, new cohort of students. Uh, what was very instrumental last year uh, was that we finally had the first students actually attending our courses at Opit. Um, Francesca and Mark are just a few of them. We had uh, actually uh, around 100 students across the two programs uh, that we launched last year and coming from 37 countries, which was very impressive from my, my point of view, considering it uh, being a first year. And this was very important for us. Um, many, many, many students throughout the, the admission process this year told us, OK, you're, you're current, you're modern now. Uh, will you be able to keep being modern and current in 10 years from now? Um, the answer to me lies upon our capability of um, intercepting uh, what's going on on the market, but also intercepting uh, the opportunities for improvement that our current students are offering us. And this was definitely like a, a very important learning milestone for us of being able to finally have students and to finally iterate on our uh, learning methodology, on our content and on our uh, value proposition as a whole. I must say that uh, I'm very, I was very impressed and very satisfied by the feedbacks that we received by our students. Um, last year, we uh, took 25 courses overall and 25, 22 are out of 25 were actually graded as exceptional, which is outstanding for me. And three of them, while still being rated as very good, needed improvement. And definitely we, we acted on it, even though maybe the, 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 the feedback time and the iteration loop is not like on the second, because of course you need to wait and improve. Um, we definitely acted on a lot of improvements that came up as uh, things that we could improve on. And uh, so you're very lucky on being enrolled to this new year because you will not only get what last year's students got, but also a lot of improvements. And, uh, um, and we definitely did a lot 
for this new cohort, but there is an equally uh, uh, full roadmap uh, for the years ahead. So we're working on a number of, uh, of, uh, of uh, trails. So the first one is strengthen strengthening the relationship that OPIT has with companies even more. Uh, this is hugely important for an institution like OPIT that wants uh, its teaching and learning outcomes to be as applicable and practicable uh, as possible. Um, just to give you an example of another things we're working on, we're working with an OPIT professor to develop the proof of concept of the OPIT AI tutor, which will basically train on our proprietary learning uh, content to assist you throughout your learning journey in combination, of course, with our uh, physical tutors. We, we love technology, but we also value the, the human touch of, uh, of uh, things. Um, this is not just a super innovative project for OPIT, but uh, I believe, uh, I mean, the way we're intending it is to become also a playground for you to work on within your capstone projects at the end of your um, learning path with, with OPIT. Um, Professor Profumo and, and Elena Bonfiglioli were mentioning the importance of learning, unlearning and relearning. So the, the cir circularity of education and uh, another thing that we're currently working on is actually the, the accreditation on, of every single course that we have at OPIT individually in order to allow you to keep studying and keep learning at OPIT even after you, you finish your, uh, your, your degree. And finally, uh, again, we're working on a lot more, but uh, this is a thing I wanted to mention. We're starting our research development program, which is the initial milestone for developing research streams within OPIT and is also the initial milestone for launching PhDs within OPIT. And a lot more, I could talk for hours, but uh, um, I'm, I'm done for now. I would like uh, once again to congratulate you, to thank you for trusting us uh, uh, for taking on this such a, such a such an important learning milestone uh, within your personal and professional life, and I wish you the best for the new academic year. Thank you so much, Ricardo. And I suppose Professor Pupo has some final remarks to give to our new students and current students as well. Wait, did I? Uh, sorry. Um. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. First of all, thank you for your time, dear students. I know that you are very busy. Most of you are, they have uh, to work and in the meantime, they have to study. And we really appreciate your efforts in this direction. Now we are, we are in the, the official moment when we start the new academic year. Then uh, what I can say, that after this uh, ceremony, we are in place to uh, open the academic year 2014-2025. And I'm sure that uh, you really, really enjoy what uh, we are going to do in the, this academic year. Uh, we are available uh, for anything you need. If you have questions, if you have a and the necessity to to get some help you know the the community as I was said more time during the the previous speech it's really really important and i have the feeling that this is a good step to start for you and just to try to do your best in order to get the degree in a short time and receive what really you want then open the new academic year. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Um, thank you, the audience. There are a few questions, so maybe I'm just going to refer these few questions and then we're going to close the event. Uh, but for any other further questions that you have, you can, I know that our students that are already enrolled, they have a, a webinar starting off in a few minutes as well. So I'm going to be brief, but just Mark, there is one question for you. If you can just 
give an example of how you abused what you learned at Opit in a real world situation? I don't know if you have one to share. Sure. Um, well, I, I can talk about my, uh, my internship actually. So um, I had mentioned that I was doing in the anomaly detection. And so in one of the classes we had touched on um, applying a lot of different uh, machine learning and AI in the financial sector itself. And so anomaly detection was one of those things. And, and I was able to um, use that foundational knowledge and apply it right into the job, actually. Um, the, the one thing that I, I found more challenging, actually, was that the, uh, the job itself, had, they, had, they had more data than I had ever worked with before. So it was a bit of a diff different problems that, than, uh, than what I've had before. But it, definitely, you can always work around it. Um, someone knows something. If you ask enough people, so, and people are very willing to help out, especially with these very, very, you know, challenging problems. Um, but uh, I, I came up with some really good solutions and, uh, and some good results in that case. I hope that answers the question there. Yes, thank you so much. Uh, there is a question about the future and vision about from Paolo. He's asking if you're planning to have a research sector for publishing scientific articles and research with students as well. I don't know if this is part of the the next steps, Ricardo. Um, yes, absolutely. Uh, I was talking about the, the research part. Um, the idea is, of course, to start research streams and uh, to start PhDs. Uh, we're, of course, thinking about it on a more applicative angle, so having it more uh, connected with the, with the actual need of companies rather than for pure research. Even though, of course, the the, the publication of uh, articles and academic uh, yeah academic articles uh, will, of course, be a desirable out outcome. We actually had the first academic paper being approved by an academic uh, uh, publication uh, last week uh, by one of our professors. Uh, so. Yes. Yeah, the trend is that one. Okay, so I suppose for all the other questions for the current students, please refer to the next webinar and for anybody else, you can just write to us and we will direct you to Professor Profumo, Ricardo, our students or our professors. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you for being here. Thank you for attending the webinar and a warm welcome to all the new students and the current students as well. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Thanks. Cheers.